Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to Red Dead Redemption 2. Previously, uh, we did a couple of major things, but we ended up going on a pretty long trip up, up to the north. Uh, we started off by investigating a couple of the gunslingers, uh, finally, so following up on Levin's notes. Uh, one not far from camp, uh, Emmett Granger, and then one way up north, Flaco Hernandez. Uh, while we were up north, we went after the um, legendary white bison and paid um, respects to Davy and Jenny's graves. And we ended off by paying a visit to Thomas Downs, the last of our debtors um, given by Strauss. And so with that being said, let's jump back in. Join us, Arthur. <laughs> a request. What did I have for moonshine? Okay. If you'll excuse me. Okay. Why don't you sit, Arthur? There. When are we hunting another bear? Uh, maybe not for a while. <laughs> Might be for the best. If we just had Stu not long long ago. Hey. Lady. Let's uh, get some of that coffee. Do I see a passed out uncle over in the corner? I think I do. Put in a good word, would you? Speak. Don't cry, boy. Speak about your gang. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> boy. Is there? It seems the uh, cat has got our friend here's tongue. I was thinking Mr. Williamson could have a word. You ready to talk, boy? I told you, mister. I told all of you. I don't know nothing, okay? They ain't no friends of mine. I just been ridden with them for a Horse while. Horseshit! You see, we heard that part, so how about you tell the truth? That's what you want me to do. Hurt him, so the next time he opens his mouth, it is to tell us what is going on! Ah! Uh, <laughs> who am I kidding? One of O'Driscoll's boys couldn't open his mouth, but he'd tell a lie. Screw it. Let's just have some fun. Uh -huh. Geld him. Oh, yeah! What's he doing? Where's he going? Oh, don't worry. You're only balls, boy. Just gonna cause you trouble. You know, in Imperial Rome, Unix was among the happiest and most loyal of courtiers. No, you're kidding me, right? Of course. You sick bastards! Oh, what do you want from me? Well, you are gonna talk. The only question is now or after we got these little fellas off. Okay, okay, listen. I know where old Driscoll was holed up. And you're right. He don't like you any more than you like him. He's at Six Point Cabin. Oh. Uh, I'll take you there. Serious, I don't like him. I mean, I like him even less than I like you. No offense. Oh, none taken. Okay, then, partner. Uh, uh, Why don't you take a few of us up there right now? I got this, Dutch. Should be fun. All right, you. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> Killed him. <laughs> Let's both hope you ain't trying to trick us, O'Driscoll. Uh, I ain't no O'Driscoll. But you sure as shit was. John, Phil, come here. We got a social call needs making. Where are we heading? Uh, we're up into the hills behind Valentine. Uh, well, I'll show you. John, you take this little rattlesnake with you. Any nonsense, kill him. Sure. You're gonna pay your buddies our respects. He taking us to Combe? That's what he says. Come on. I'm taking you to him. Look, I I'll give you more directions when we're close. But if I know where we are, it's up past Valentine. All right. I'll leave. Having some uh, trouble there, Dan? Come on, let's get moving. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I don't think Gelding would feel too good. Sharing saddle with an old Driscoll. Who'd have thought? How many times I gotta say? I ain't an old Driscoll. You sure look like one, and you smell like. God damn. You smell like one, too. I smell like horse shit. That's right. Boy, are you high. Boy, like, yeah, that's the smell. You got throwing knives in your saddlebag. Dud said that you might. I was asked to give them. And I'm doing you the further courtesy of telling you about it. Next time you want to give me something, how about you give it to me? Instead of hiding it somewhere, hoping the opportunity comes up to mention it. Last goddamn favor I do you. Don't fail. Hey, hey, if, if I got my bearings, it's over here. Yeah, I know this country. Take this track up through the rocks. I just think they actually do that to uh, bulls when they're young. How are you holding up, John? Fine. Still ain't right, but I'm fine. You damn well should be after all that bed rest. Hey, all right. Abigail wouldn't let me up. You know her. She won't be reasoned with. Well, when you was having a failure of reason, hiding behind your woman, we were getting shot at. And I'd do the same for you, if you was in a bad way. I hope so. But I fear you don't know how to help anyone. Except in yourself. You see, old Driscoll? If this is how he treats his friends, imagine what he does to his enemies. <laughs> I got an inkling of what y'all do to your enemies when you put those gelding tongs to my parts. Well, you still got those tongs? I got a knife. Won't be so clean, but it'll do the job. <laughs> Keep that in your mind. Right yeah. Of now we go left. Uh, road will take us up and round. There are experiences in my life I would prefer not to have. That's one of them. Those are the hills. Head for them. Save your horses. We gotta climb, boys. You know. You all ain't that different from the old Driscolls. What did you just say? I've been watching you all these weeks, and, uh... You've been tied to a tree. You don't know nothing about this gang. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd say you don't know much about the old Driscolls. But maybe I know more about you than you know about them. And I know all about them, so... <laughs> Tell us then. How are we like those mongrel dogs? You're outlawed like them. You're out to survive like them. You live rough. You live hard. Fighting the law. Nature. You're out for yourselves. See? This is why you're an O'Driscoll, O'Driscoll. You're out to survive. We're out to live. Free. Colm's a sneak thief and a killer. Dutch is... Dutch is more like a teacher. From where I've been, you just look the same as all. Then you looked, but you ain't seen. John! Shut that boy up. Enough out of you. Boys, we're almost on them. Now, who knows if this son of a bitch we got with us is talking true, but if it's what he says it is, and Colm O'Driscoll's here, we can end years of fighting. Here and now. Okay, now, now cut left up here. We, we go down the hill into the forest. We're going in quiet. Taking them out as we find them. Trying not to set things off. But if we do, we move quick and hard. We settle this like we know how, okay? Okay by me. With you, Morgan. All right, then. Through the trees here. Close. I'd leave your horses the other side of this clearing. I'll get my guns off my horse, and I'm ready. Easy, Bill. Quiet.
This is it. The cabin's just the other side of this hill. Okay. Off your horses. Let's go. You gonna get them knives? I said easy. Okay, I think I'll go with this. And there we go on the knives. I'm gonna change the order on that a bit. Yeah. So I might actually use the bow. Um, there we go. Follow me, all right? It ain't far. We might have shared a horse, but we ain't friends. Remember, I'm watching you every moment. I ain't gonna shop you now. Come on. It'd be suicide. You'll die, boy. But you'll lose your balls first. Jesus Christ. Come on. Okay, get down. The cabin's in the clearing down there. There'll be a bunch of fellers hiding out there, too. Are these fellas armed? Armed? Drunk? Wary of strangers, yep. And Colm O'Driscoll? Oh, he'll be holed up in his cabin. Be passed out, booze blind, likely as not. Hey, over there. Someone's coming. So, uh, who's gonna tell him we ain't got nothing for the pot? Oh, let me think. The fellow that spooked the game, I reckon. I'm gonna drain it. I I'll catch up. No, we ain't gonna fall for that. We're gonna wait so you can tell him yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If anyone's actually gonna shoot the messenger, it'd be that mean son of a bitch. Mm -hmm, yes, yeah, sir. Come on, shake it off. Come on. What are we doing about the pisser, Morgan? One by the tree. I'm gonna deal with this first fella. Okay, go to work. Hey, the next two. What's the plan? Keep back where they won't hear us. What? I move, you move. Take him out in the distance. I can do that. We're waiting. You moving or not? Just you. Good luck. We're moving on the camp. I left our guide up there. He's meek as a little lamb. He better be. Over here. Feller on the log. What are we doing about him? This one's mine. We need it done right. Go on and show us then. Okay, now what? We're at the perimeter. Wait on my mark. You wanna take a look at these boys? Sure thing. Something that might happen. <laughs> Yeah. 
What? You set us up. No, I didn't. You did. Como Driscoll ain't here. He was here, I swear. I sw I mean, if I was setting you up, I, I wouldn't have <laughs> saved your life. It's a good point, Arthur. All right, then, go on. Get out of here. Hey? I won't kill you. No, I didn't set you up. You're lost. Shit, lost. I'm letting you run away. Now, go on. Get out of here. That's as good as killing me. Out there, without you, Como Driscoll's gonna lose his mind about this. <laughs> so? So I'm one of you now. Give me a break. All right, then. But I'm warning you. Oh, I, I know. Come on, let's get to camp. So you got the cash, then? What cash? Yeah, there's usually some cash. In the chimney. I'll check it. The rest of you boys, get to camp, quick. See, Arthur? Yeah, I ain't so bad. <laughs> hey, Bill. You tell Dutch old Karen ain't worth killing. Just yet. <laughs> Right you are. Hmm. Well, should check the place out. Jensen. Money. More money. That's pretty good. Okay. I mean, that could have gotten a bit cleaner, but overall, that wasn't too bad. Snake oil. Shotgun shells. Before we go to the chimney, let's see what else is here. Shotgun slugs. Hmm. Reminder: I need Arthur to eat more often. Canned fruit. Heck yeah. Bourbon. I got plenty. Anything over here? Oh, it's on the floor there. Bottle, maybe. Alright, um. <laughs> like, the game's still like, you need some more tutorial, alright? This one I want to customize a bit. Something tucked away. Very nice hall. And I think we should get out of here. Yeah, so the gelding, so I was talking to one of my students about that actually. She works, um, does some ranch work, and she was kind of telling me how they do that when they're pretty young, so they just don't even really feel it. Or if they do, they sure don't react to it. And when it comes to cows or cattle.
Okay. Okay, that's not the one. Uh, this goes back a ways. Probably somewhere in this mess. Oh, we got a map. There we are. So we're looking for the big horn here, number five. Uh, howdy. Hey there. <laughs> Just a. Uh, Looking for some big horns. Easy now. There we go. We're still scouting though. I think we're done for on this one for now. <laughs> I tell you, the ram wasn't scared off by the by the wolves alone. Let's uh set up camp. Oh, I'm actually, uh, hmm. I didn't realize we were that high up. I, I sh actually, I, I should have realized that. Quite sure which way to go. Oh, you're okay. I'm not coming after you. So we're literally right on top of the spot. What is that? Oh. What are the odds? Okay. Let's. Go bow on this one, I think. Yeah, kind of lucked out here. There you are. Okay. The trail. Uh, trail's been here a while. Where was that? Scrapings or something, maybe? Tree rub. Ain't close. It's okay. okay. Tracks looks like. No nope, fur. Okay. Where are you? Oh, I think that's it. Oh. 
Oh, I missed. Where the heck did you go? You didn't go over the cliff, did you? Oh, certainly did. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Man, how far did you fall? Or did you, or did you just literally run down the side? Ooh, that's that's pretty. Okay, so there has there have been quite a few big ones in the area. And I'd like to try my hand at one again if I can. Loons are kind of an interesting bird. Uh, so most birds uh, don't have bone marrow. Their bones are hollowed, hollowed out and strutted together, uh, reduces body mass. And, you know, bone marrow is where we produce our blood cells, our stem cells for the blood. Slow it up. Ooh. I actually do need one of you, I'm sorry. Otherwise, I would not recommend doing that. Uh, so, as I was saying, most birds don't have the bone bone marrow because of the, uh, you know, it's, it's a reduces their body mass. Uh, but loons are actually an exception of that rule. I'm sorry, you go. They still uh, retain that feature. Oh, two eagle feathers. I think that's actually all I needed. And so, um, most birds actually produce their blood cells through with an organ they call the bursa, rather than, you know, most other animals that do it right from the marrow. But like I said, um, weight re uh, mass reduction, essentially, or weight reduction, depending on how you want to look at that. Another interesting uh, bird fact. <laughs> I might as well spill some knowledge while we're while we're doing this, right? Um, you know, mammals uh, have red blood cells that have expe that expel their nuclei as they uh, mature. Uh, birds actually retain them, which is kind of interesting. Okay there. So if you look at blood from a bird, you'll see little uh, nuclei in their blood cells, and you won't. Ho! Hey -o. You are mine! Okay. Is this. A, no, Get it's not. That, Let's uh, creep down the hill slowly. Oh, this is a bad. This is a bad. <laughs> okay, we're good. Oh, we gotta get closer to the ram. my chance. There you are. My little pretty.
That looks like a pretty clean kill. But the angling. Oh god, I got it. I actually don't remember if it's the carcass or the pelt I need, so we're gonna take both. Come on. I probably should have just taken the whole dang thing, but... Hindsight's twenty twenty. okay? Just don't get in my back. Oi. Oh, here, I just cleaned you. Okay. This back to camp. The camp is so pretty at night. See one of them kangaroos. Giant bucks and rats who keep their babies in their pockets. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. What kind of lunatic brought that up? <laughs> That's an interesting way of seeing things. Maybe we'll head over there one of these days, hmm? Yeah. Start a new life as kangaroo farmers. Uncle, you just made me lose a few brain cells. I'm not even going to touch that. Because I will not stop if I touch that. That didn't sound right, did it? Haven't okay. received anything from you in a while, Mr. Morgan. Oh, shut up. Uh, big horn, horn. Good job, Arthur. Grizzly mutton. Oh, that's a nice name for it. Perfect ram hide, Look perfect ram carcass. Should fetch a good price. I'm gonna keep a couple of these for myself, I think. Many thanks, Mr. Morgan. Let's see. I've come up with some ideas for ways we could improve things around here if you want to take a look. Okay, okay so it's the skull we wanted. A very nice addition, I think. How's it going? Very nice. I like it. Guess we'll see if anyone notices. I think they'll notice a giant ram skull, but who knows? Eh? Who knows? Dear Arthur, I've written this letter a hundred times or more, and I cannot get it right. It's me. You know it's me from the bad handwriting. I know I said when we last spoke, and I was going off to get married, that we would not speak again. I know I said a lot of things, and I meant them, I suppose, at the time. But I'm not so proud as to not speak to people who care for me, or cared for me. I've been in Valentine for a couple of months. I had some bad luck, and, well, it's a long story and not an interesting one. But I am here for now. I saw a couple of the girls 
or whatever the polite term is for them, that ran with you and your associates in town. And I heard tell of a man who sounded like you. I would love to see you again, if you could spare me a little bit of your time. I'm renting a room at Chadwick Farm, just north of Valentine. Yours, Mary Linton. All right. that I did say child left me something right oh the uh the arrow I imagine yeah fire arrows okay so the ram skull is right there very nice I like the little touches that does for the camp So I'm thinking, uh, well first I'm thinking let's clean the horse, cause she's clearly, she's clearly not happy right now. And what Lunaria says goes, um, let's do, uh, Give her a nice little pat. You all right, girl? And feed. Yeah, here you go. Okay, I'm gonna change to my regular outfit. Let's see if there was food. Looks like there is. Morning, Arthur. Miss Grimshaw. <laughs> morning. Good morning. Okay, sick of all. Tilly, can you come in and talk to me? No, listen, the way she was coming directly at me. I'm gonna make a little trip to town. Smithfields. Oh, I've been here before, man. No brawling this time, all right? <laughs> he remembers well, me. Here, sir. Don't think I've seen you around here before. Right then, what'll it be? All right. So, uh, I usually go for the longer hair on Arthur, but I'm going to kind of save that for a little bit later. Um, let's do... Do a three for now. We'll let it regrow then. People ask where you got it, you be sure to tell them. And now, so let's go to a two. Looking mighty fine. I think that's good enough. Clean up a little bit. No particular right. reason. Our work here is done. Hi, folks. Hello, Hi. welcome. I need a wash. You got a bath? I got someone warming it up for you already. Just head down the corridor there. Let me guess that these are rooms that charge by the hour. <laughs> if you know what I mean.
Would you lack any assistance? I thought we've been through this before. I said, unless it's Dutch. Nah, I'm good. Thanks. Go away. Oh, sure, no problem. There, now we are freshly... Fresh haircut, fresh shave, nice bath. I just changed the outfit. Out there. Let me know if you need a place to rest. So, again, no reason. It has nothing to do with the fact that we're going to see Mary. It has everything to do with the fact that we're going to see Mary. Hey, partner. I can't remember exactly where the place is. Probably check. Um, before I get too far ahead of myself here. Yes? Oh, I'm sorry I didn't mean to disturb you, ma'am. Is Mrs. Linton in? I'll go see. Mrs. Linton? A caller for you. Hello, Arthur. I heard you and your friends was around. I... Okay. Where's, um... Where's what's-his-name? Died. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, me too. Me too. Happened a while ago. Pneumonia. Bad business. Sure. So, uh... Well, you've been... <clears throat> you've been made a widow and come here looking for me is that it no ain't like that arthur oh, okay listen arthur i i'm my family i need your help you mean the family that always looked down on me you want me to help it's my little brother jamie i always liked jamie at least compared to the rest of them He's broken Daddy's heart. Daddy has a heart. Don't make me beg you, Arthur. My money, my life, me. I wasn't good enough. I'm sorry. We need your help real bad. Little Jamie's joined the Chelonians, that strange religious order. Good for him. They're quite mad, Arthur. They'll kill him. You're the only person he'd listen to. So, I'm too rough to marry into your family, but it's okay to ask me to help in saving your family. I'm sorry. I understand if you don't want to help me, but... but I think of you often. Long time ago now. I'm begging you, Arthur. I say let Jamie live Jamie's life and not the nightmare that his daddy dreamed up for him. Jamie's so innocent, Arthur. Please, Arthur. Will you help me? Where is it? Somewhere out near Carmody Dell, I think. The rancher there said he'd seen him around the Cumberland Forest. I just want him back, Arthur. If you find him, bring him to me at the station. I'll see what I can do. I'll owe you. You already owe me. Okay, 
girl. Hey, buddy. Hey, Mr. Mr. Arthur. Why are you always so mad? You're crazy. All that shooting. And they said I was crazy. I'm not crazy. Not like you. Um. You beat up the big fella. He won't beat me up. I asked for it. You think you're real crazy, mister? Are you really calling me crazy? I fought in a war, mister. I did. Sent me strange seeing all them fellas die. Which war was that exactly? A bad one, Mr. Arthur. Oh, a real bad. There's good wars? Uh, I... I saw terrible things. I ain't been the same since. Uh, I get... I get... funny. I'll go now. Don't act crazy now. Come on, girl. Those old Driscoll boys are some rustling. Mary's kind of an interesting character, if you ask me. I know there's a lot of uh, mixed opinions of her out in the ether. Help find peace. Help a blind man. Take this. Run from the seeker, sir. Run and keep running, or help others to run. Uh, sure. Okay, mister. <laughs> All the best now. Are you still here? What are you waiting for? I can't tell you what you want to hear. No, but you keep telling me things that are interesting, that's for sure. Bruises, you know. Lucky I went easy on you. Go on, have yourself a quick nosy. What the hell are you talking about? I didn't do anything to you. Jerk. So old Bob Crawford was livid about his coach getting robbed. I was very sympathetic. Okay, platinum watch, I don't need. Silver. No, I don't do watches. Pearl necklace. I'm gonna save one. I'm getting rid of the cards because I'm not going to use them. Platinum spring bracelet. Nah. The earring I need. Gold bar I don't need. Oh, that's a lot of money. We're going to use that. Um, Gunslingers. No. Kentucky bourbon. No. Gunslingers. No. Hold on to the necklace for now just in case. Silver emblem ring. I don't think I need the ring. But... Pen from Jimmy Brooks. I'm gonna hold on to that as a kind of a keepsake. Uh, platinum band. Remember you. 
Passed through here some time ago, huh? Yeah, I did a job for you and everything. So I don't know what you're talking about is fighting. All right, now that we're here, you know what we gotta do. Actually, I can't do it because I need to go and uh, find Jamie. I'll come back for it though. So we're gonna make another trip up here. Twisted my ankle something fierce. Think you could give me a ride? Do I trust her? Yeah, sure. Hop on. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. You know Emerald Ranch? Mind taking me there? Why, yes. I do know it. Sure. Hi. Glad I ran into you. Huh. I raised that horse, you know. Raised it since it was just a foal. Oh, uh, losing a horse is hard. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, that horse did right by me. Better than my husband, truth be told. That fool, always complaining, but does he do something about it? Man barely lifts his hand to wave the flies away, aside from to lift a drink, of course. Marriage for me has been nothing but trouble. But Biscuit, he was a fine animal. Loyal, smart, brave. Didn't take no guff, not from no one. Had one of them mountain boys pull a gun on me once. I was riding up near the Dakota and had stopped by a nice warm patch. Must have dozed off, but I wake up and find some nasty piece of work pointing a rusty shotgun straight at me. Well, he gets wheezing on and I must have made some sort of noise because the next thing I know, Biscuit had nipped his ear clean off. Kicked his hide too as he was hollering away. Didn't think a man could run so fast. Oh, yeah? Yeah, had a good laugh on that one. <laughs> I tell the husband, what does he do? Should have never gone over there, honey, he says. Gee, thanks. <coughs> so, you live at Emerald Ranch then? For the time being. I was looking for work. They was looking for some help with the gardens. If I waited any longer for my husband to put food on the table, I'd have died of starvation. I'll be moving on soon, though. Emerald Ranch, well, it's a strange place. Yeah, I've so. heard. The owner's a mean bastard. Strange, too. Delights in bullying folk. There's a daughter, but she never leaves the house. You can see her in the window sometimes. Oh, we're getting close now. She's a record you don't gotta flip, as uh, some would say. Here we go. This is great. This was kind of you, mister. Please take this as my way of thanking you. Love the fresh air. <laughs> Appreciate it. <sighs> what a lousy day. Well. Keep on coming back to this place, don't I? Yep. So what am I getting in the mail, Harry? Let's uh, stop quick and check that. doing anything you got one chance you get vicious with me again it's not gonna end well for you they must just not like the fact that I have a $35 bounty and it doesn't say I have any mail glad to see you on the up and up just get it so they're not angry at me It's only thirty-five dollars. You 
You're okay, girl. Whoa, easy. And what is Chelonianism? No less than the recent rediscovery of theology. <laughs> Gentlemen! Shell of safety. Shell of safety. Uh, gonna speak to the boy? Arthur? Hello, son. Your sister is very worried. The boy has chosen a path, sir. A path to truth. Well, I mean, his sister just wants to speak with him. Arthur, I've chosen a path. The boy has chosen a path. He's chosen safety. What path have you chosen, sir? I'm still searching, I guess. We are all searching. Chelonianism is about searching. What do we search for, do you think? <laughs> Stupidity. I don't know. Safety? Safety and meaning? <laughs> Jamie knows the truth. But of course, you may speak with him. Exactly. If your teachings are so great, what harm can I do? I'm... I'm not... I'm not coming with you, Arthur! Just come and speak with Mary, then make up your mind! Sure. Leave me alone, Arthur! I didn't ask for your help! Damn, he's quick. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this kid. They're just using you. Telling you what you want to hear. What the hell do you know about it, Arthur? Just stop and let's talk about this. I don't have to answer to you. Your sister's worried about you. I was doing just fine by myself. Yeah. I don't know, dude. You're Come wearing a. On, you ain't stupid. You can see this is crazy. You're the crazy one. You're with a religious cult that has a giant turtle on their outfit. Arthur Morgan. 
Leave me alone! Please, kid. Put that gun down. I warn you, Arthur! I'm... I'm gonna... I don't want to live anymore! Kid, just calm down. Leave me alone! Now calm down! Let's go see your sister. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, kid. Have I been a terrible fool, Arthur? I don't know. I don't know enough about it. But one thing I do know. There ain't no shame in looking for a better world. I missed you, Arthur. Are you and Mary sweet on one another again? Oh, no. That's all a long time ago, son. Well, this wasn't how I thought today would turn out. It's been a long time, Jamie Gillis. You were a kid last time I saw you. And didn't try to kill yourself. You know, you taught me how to ride a horse. Too well, apparently. <laughs> Shalonia, though? Really? You'd fall for that? They were very nice to me. They're decent. I'm sure. Please tell me you didn't give them any money. Of course I did. They rely on charitable donations. Jesus, Jamie, come on. I just wanted to believe that there might be something good coming my way one day. Guess that's dead in the water. With the turtles. Shut up. <laughs> All Father kept telling me was, you won't amount to anything. You're not enough of a man. I had to get away. I couldn't take it anymore. Forgive me. But your father's a bully and a coward. Don't listen to him. Hey, don't talk about him like that. What do you want me to say, Jamie? He's a good father, nice man. He won't be happy I saw you. Well, please send him my worst regards. <laughs> the thing is, he's right. I'm not good at anything. Come on, that ain't true. Tell me something you like. Um, uh, well... Um, don't think too hard. <laughs> apples, I guess. Apples? Yeah, I love apples. Okay. I was thinking more along the lines of carpentry or horses or something, but... All right, go work in an orchard then. By that token, you must really like shooting and robbing people. <laughs> I only like shooting young idiots who run away from me when I'm trying to help them. Father told me what you do. I'm sure he did. Hey, are you still with Dutch and what was his name? H Hester? I'll say, yep, still the same, sort of. And Annabelle and Bessie? I'm afraid they're dead. Shit. Maybe Mary did make the right choice. No doubt. Can't say otherwise. None of it is anything like the nonsense you read in the newspapers. So, are you two getting back together? I told you, no. Just ask me for a favor. You know Barry Linton's dead? Pneumonia. He told me. So the door's open, so to speak. That's all in the past. Different people now. She's not. And you seem just the same. Well, maybe that right there's a problem. She was always too good for me. Now let's just get you back to your sister. She's waiting at the station for us. Here we are. She must be waiting inside. You're nervous about seeing her, aren't you? Huh. I imagine he would be. Jamie! Jamie! Come home, 
please, you've... Father's been very sad. My father wouldn't know sadness if it died in his bed. But I'll come home for you. My boy, my sweet boy. Come on. Oh, Arthur, thank you. Thank you. It's good to see you, Mary. And you, Arthur. And you. I've... You're... Oh, you'll never change. I know that. I feel like the luckiest man alive, and I feel like a fool. That woman confuses me and plays me for a fiddle like no one else alive. I trust I will not make a god-awful fool of myself once more, but... Somehow, I imagine I shall. I suppose I could check out the newspaper while we're here. Get your news here, Valentine. Let's see, can I buy one? Interested in a good read? Be seeing you around. Yeah, uh, pitched battle leaves many dead. Outlaws and train on driverless journey. That was us. Owned by Levit Leviticus Cornwall. Okay. A private train owned by the railroad, sugar, and oil magnet Leviticus Cornwall was robbed in broad daylight by masked outlaws headed north towards the Grizzlies. The outlaws hoarded and stopped the train shortly after it had departed from West Elizabeth. Initial cables sent as a printing time indicate the bloody takeover occurred in order to steal railroad bonds from the personal car of Mr. Cornwall. Shortly after the robbery, the train was set in motion without a driver or crew, barreling, barreling dangerously uh, through the area at a high rate of speed. The train was eventually brought to a stop by engineers and lawmen north of Annisburg. That's a long ways to go. Um, who reported a scene of violent struggle and bloody carnage on board. Some engineers and guards from the train survived the slaughter, but were too startled to report much information of value to authorities. Um, down, bank boat heists, uh, largest robbery in years, Dutch's boys accused, bounties placed. Furnishes a sensation among residents, money believed stashed by outlaws. After a bloody shootout that resulted in the seizure of a large quantity of banknotes being shipped by boat, Pinkerton Agency officials have restricted access to the town of Blackwater while a massive manhunt is underway. Hello. Officials issued bounties on the heads of Dutch Vanderland and his gang, commonly known as Dutch's Boys. Banks uh, looked to shipping as assets via boats as a more reliable means of transportation, impervious from thieves. Clearly that didn't work out that way. The deadly attack resulted in the loss of $150,000, the largest robbery in the region in recent years. Authorities believe that the man, uh, men may have stashed the money in Blackwater before fleeing. Reports indicate that many are searching high and low for the stash, uh, appending public spaces and neighbors' gardens. Residents of Blackwater view the lockdown with contempt. Uh, businesses who depend on shipments of dry goods, sundry, sundries, and catalog sales complain the Pinkertons have caused an unnecessary burden to the lives and well to the life and welfare, as the as you would expect of them. 
Blizzard aftermath and grizzlies. Snowmelt worries those in flood-prone area. A series of late spring snowstorms rendered the grizzlies impassable in May, catching many unprepared, having used most of their winter provisions. The snow, often measuring feet in many areas, is unusual this late in the season. Reports from riders who have recently encountered the area say that respite is finally in sight. The snow is coming quickly with the seasonable warmth, which worries many that rivers downstream will swell and burst their banks, as happened in the late spring snowstorm of 83. Planting season is also reportedly delayed as many areas are too muddy for work animals to work a plow. And family murdered, land of the lawless. I think these are going back in time. Some of these are going back in time a little bit. Um, highway robbery and murder have become a daily affair once more to those traveling near tall trees. And instead, armadillo or tumbleweed, a uh, Huntington trader and his wife and two boys were traveling by wagon when they were held up by heavily armed bandits believed to be members of the notorious Del Lobo gang. Uh, Mr. Schrader opened fire and the shorter of the bandits was soon a corpse. But the taller one worked into desperation by the deaths of his companion, or by the death of his companion, found his mark, and Mr. Schrader was soon a corpse too. His wife, Isabella, stood her ground and fired at the bandits until they fled. Her younger son, Isaac, had been hit in the incident and soon bled to death. Travelers are warned to avoid the areas as, as, as incidents of violence, thievery, and murder are increasing faster than law enforcement can pursue them. Okay, how many of these are there? Um, 21 dead in attacks, banks and stages held at gunpoint. Komal Driscoll, a man with a bloody record, beloved pastor among dead. Uh, Reverend Alex H. Hughes was shot and killed for voicing his concern for the safety of the women on board a stagecoach destined for West Elizabeth. The shameful tragedy is part of the widespread disorder led by notorious outlaw Como Driscoll and his gang. Multiple stagecoaches and shipments. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Multiple stagecoaches and shipments have been robbed by the O'Driscoll gang across New Hangover and West Elizabeth. Banks in the region are also said to be on caution as number, as a number have uh, been held up. Uh, not satisfied with the riches of their plunder, the members of the O'Driscoll gang are reported to delight in torture and bloodshed as part of their escapades and have let, left widows and widowers in their, in their wake. Travelers are encouraged to be aware and armed, especially in the area of Big Valley, where the gang is reported to have taken a large ranch as a base of operation, leaving the family and ranch hands dead. Um, heresy, religious sect recruiting, citizens of Valentine protest, claim Chilonians commit blasphemy. Um, the evils of Chilonianism are still flourishing. It is now pra practiced openly, and this newspaper believes it is a menace to all our liberty. Uh, Christian citizens of Valentine gathered at, at a church last Saturday to protest what they and any sensible-minded people consider a blasphemy in their, in their midst. The Chelonians have been actively recruiting young men. Valentine wrestles with its own homegrown religious movement. They claim the true Bible was handed down 100 years ago to our great prophet from above, quote unquote. Um, local religious leaders warn that blasphemy threatens the future of the region and indeed the country. The Chelonians hold the turtle to be, <laughs> wow, hold the turtle to be sacred and consider them ancient holy animals to never be harmed. Protester, protesters were seen holding signs with a turtle that had been crossed out. Mexican border dispute intensifies. Soldiers blocked passage. President calls for severing ties. Not since General Francisco Ramirez Torres seized the presidency of Mexico in bloody coup of 1876 have relations been so strained with the U.S. among heightened tensions. General Torres has placed troops along the border to deny entry to prospectors, cattle ranchers, and renegade bands of Indians who have taken to um, raiding the Mexican settlements. In retaliation with the isolated tone, President McAllister has called for a ban on trade with Mexico. He said the U.S. has provided resources over the years, including help in, the ending, uh, in ending the Apache Wars 10 years ago, and received little in return except hostility. 
Um, a search for ancient bones, dinosaur hunt continues, New Hanover hailed as a geological wonderland. Hailing New Hanover as a geological wonderland, amateur paleontologist Deborah McGinnis, who we met early on, is on the hunt, excavating several sites in the state. As fossils pour in from the grizzlies, McGinnis asserts that the undiscovered species of dinosaur, which she claims could fly, swim, and walk, once inhabited the region in the prehistoric ages. Labeling the elusive creature as Totalosaurus, she has devoted her life's work to unearthing the remains of the ancient animal, despite geologists saying no evidence exists in the established fossil record. Several universities have rejected her work, saying Miss McGinnis would be better suited to writing fiction than searching for dinosaurs. Can't say I disagree with that, honestly. Let me adjust. <clears throat> bubonic plague spreads, arriving ships quarantined. An epidemic of bubonic plague has broken out in, the, in India and Hong Kong and spread to our troops in the Philippines. Several soldiers have died in Manila of what was called a loathsome disease. Despite the best efforts in sanitary science to stamp, to stamp it out, the plague appears to have resurfaced in this country. In New York and Saint-Denis, victims of plague were confirmed, and vessels arrived were given the choice of a doctor visiting each ship or turning around. Any bodies suspected of death from the disease should be immediately burned, even if the cause of um, expiry is not confirmed as bubonic plague by bacteriological examination. Wars break out in Philippines, insurrection against the United States grows, the first Philippine Republic has effectively declared war on the United, on the United States, uh, objecting to the Treaty of Paris in which the U.S. took possession of the Philippines from Spain after the Spanish-American War. Uh, American naval forces have bombarded the city of Ilo, 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 Ilalo. Um, after, I'm not going to get that. After the first shots were fired, uh, they will be taught the humanity of conquerors. The War Depart Department expects the cessation, uh, cessation of hostilities to happen quickly as the American military force is strong and the Filipinos are armed mostly with bolo knives, spears, bows, and other handcrafted weapons. American occupation of the archipelago has been contentious. However, military officials are planning a humanitarian campaign after hostilities cease. Bear attacks worry residents, man killed while hunting. A hunter looked, looking for deer was set upon by a very large bear this week. The bear was separated from its cub and instincts attack, and instinct attacked the man, or and by instinct attacked the man. He fired five shots before the big brute reached him, breaking both his shoulders, cutting the vital organs, and terribly lacerating his face. He was found dead by a scouting party after his wife reported him missing. The bear had previously killed a cow a week before, and a reward of $10 was put forth for its capture. It is unknown if the bear is gravely wounded. Hunters are warned to heed caution. I wonder if that's the bear we went after. Huh. It says terribly lacerating the face. I think that's the legendary grizzly bear. Okay, and this must be our last one. The Art of Angling by Jeremy Gill. I know him, unfortunately. Um, bluegill. As I have often told the keen readers of this column, fishing is, for those of us intelligent enough to see it, really the best way to understand humanity in all its glory. I already don't like this. As a famous angler, writer, and dare I say philosopher, of course it's him writing it, I'm used to the perils of celebrity. Uh, he's a fraud. <laughs> I should probably stop reading this because it's raining. <laughs> Once while signing an autograph for a, pol a polio-stricken youth in Cool, uh, Kuala Lampur. Am I saying that right? Kuala Lampur? I know that name, but... Uh, he asked for my thoughts on fishing while it is raining. Uh, what, is, what is the irony of that? <laughs> it literally just started raining. Uh, why, can't, <clears throat> why can't the best time to fish, little fellow? I laughed heartily, slapping him on the back and causing him to cough mightily and quite frankly embarrass both of us. Poor little chap, life can be very unfair. Fishing taught me that. I always say that some of the deepest introspection into a man's soul happens when he stands in a torrential downpour, as I am doing right now. <laughs> I was fishing in the rain using 
live bait near Scarlet Meadows and hooked a monster bluegill. Aren't bluegill pretty small? And yet, even I didn't land him, so there's a metaphor pretty much for everything. Okay, interesting. And it is night again. Holy crap. <laughs> I think uh, we should probably head back to camp and sleep. Because <laughs> Arthur has been up long enough and let's put a jacket on. Uh, so that was interesting, the article on the plague. Um, of course I would find that interesting. So the plague is caused by a, a bacterium called the Yersinia pestis. And uh, it's quite diabolical in some ways, just because it's very easy to transmit. So it has like three different ways of getting around. Um, one of those ways is by, uh, by, by the common known method of vector. Um, so it's a vector-borne disease and is spread by, um, by fleas. So it's picked up by fleas. Uh, but it also can spread through two other means. So once um, it's infected a person, for instance, it can spread through um, respiratory means from one person to another and so having those two methods right off the bat is really bad because respiratory spread is very dangerous Yeah, let's get away. Yep, she's gone. <laughs> As I was saying. Uh, hey, where'd you go? Did you go in the barn? Hey. How did you pull that off? That was interesting. As I was saying, though, um, so they can spread by vector or by um, respiratory means and respiratory spread is very a uh, very easy method to spread and vector borne can also be very easy as well depending on what the vector is and how many there are uh, but another add to that for um, Yersinia is that it can spread through direct contact um, with dead bodies which is why they're saying to burn them so anyways just a little bit of information on the plague in case anybody was interested We have a bit more money, so I could probably do some upgrading here. Oh, we're out of food again, too. Jeez. I just brought back my food. How much do people eat and not bring stuff in? a little bit. Actually, I might have to contribute a lot, but let's do, um, okay, let's check the ledger. So what can we do next? Well, leather working tools would be good. Hey. He's always found a way, but lately I... I know, dear. 
seems we don't have a choice but to ride this train to the end of the Did line. you see that woman Mary Gillis about? Yes. Yes, I did. Plan. I never liked her. I know. You already told me that. Ideas above her station. Above anyone's station, that one. I was... Stay calm. I was trying to listen to that conversation. Jack needs you calm. I'm definitely not wiser. You ain't giving up on us, are you? No, of course not. But this is no situation for Abigail and the boy. Yeah, I would agree, actually. It's gonna be all right. You really think so? Things will turn around. They always do. Ladies. Hi. Good morning, Arthur. Okay. Um. I'll contribute a little bit more just to get the money up. Okay, I think that's good enough for now. You okay? There's room here. You want to sit? I'm good. I'll do it till noon just to get a little sleep in and a journal update. Okay, I think we did this already. There we go. Uh, Como Driscoll slipped through our fingers once more, and I saw my own life slip through mine. That gentle buffoon we kidnapped up in the mountains took us to a cabin. We were planning to kill Combe, but he had just gone elsewhere. We shot a bunch of his boys, and one was about to end my life when Kieran shot him. This feud is, uh, it's bled out from Dutch and Combs' mutual hatred from a loathing that permeates all of us and all of them. Still, I found quite a, sh uh, quite a shotgun in the cabin. And there's the drawing. And uh, there's our big horn, which is really cool. Let's see, eagle, loon, horses. Um, saw Mary again. I feel like the luckiest man alive, and I feel like a fool. He and plays me for a fiddle like no one else. Some religious order and needed saving, or so she and the god-awful daddy seem to have thought. I took him home after a pathetic little squabble. Poor boy. Wonder what will become of him. Education and an unpleasant father have been a terrible curse for him, I fear. As for Mary, I trust I will not make a god-awful fool of myself once more, but somehow I imagine I shall. All right. All right. That is a good place to close things out. Um, to recap, we started off by um, having a short conversation with Kieran that led us to an O'Driscoll camp. Um, we weren't able to get comb, but they did have a large stash of money there, and Kieran saved our life, and has now kind of been, is starting to be integrated into the group. We haven't really seen him around yet, but, uh, you know, I can imagine, you, you can imagine there's not going to be a, a quick transition. I mean, he was with the O'Driscolls. Um, we followed up by going after the legendary ram, and we ended up getting a perfect one as well for the carcass, which we needed. And uh, after that, we uh, we had received a letter from... Uh, Arthur's former lover, Mary Linton, uh, Linton and uh, she essentially wanted to meet up with him. Um, so according to the past story that we got on her, she had married at one point, left Arthur and the gang and, and married. 
and uh, you know just didn't want this life, I guess, or or, or some, something in that in that realm. I would imagine she wants she wants him to change, and that's not not going to happen. And so what she was essentially looking for is for us to help her get her brother away from a a cult that worships turtles called the Chelonians. And um, we did that, and she essentially took off with him on the train. Uh, but she's been kind of set up in Valentine, probably looking for him, to be honest. Um, I don't actually know where she's from, even though I've played this before. I don't really know where Mary's from. They don't really ever specify that. Or, or if they do, I don't remember. Uh, but anyways, that's, uh, that's uh, uh, what we've done as far as storyline goes. And so um, with that being said, let us officially close things out for the night. Thank you all for joining, and I will see you all later.